In question three of this series, I'll show you how to graph the polar equation of a conic. The question we have is graph the polar equation r is equal to nine over three minus nine cosine theta. The first step to doing this is to write this in one of the standard forms. And in question number one, I showed you four standard form equations. The one that matches this particular equation is shown right here. So what we wanna do is make this look like the standard form. And we can do that by first factoring out a three from these two terms. What that will end up giving us is an expression where we have one minus a number in front of cosine theta. Let me show you what I mean. I have r is equal to nine over, I'll factor out a three from both. This becomes one minus three cosine theta. I can reduce this further, nine divided by three gives us three at the top and one over here. So our equation is r is equal to three over one minus three cosine theta. Now what's interesting about this particular equation and all equations that look like this is that the major axis is horizontal and the directrix is a vertical line where x is equal to negative p. The next step is to find out what e and p are. What's important about e is that it tells us whether it's a parabola, hyperbola, or an ellipse. Take a close look at what we've been given here. We have three cosine theta. Our e value has to be positive three. And you're probably wondering, it's negative three, how is it positive? Don't be fooled, this is the same thing as saying one minus plus three cosine theta. And this is why e is equal to three. And since e is greater than one, we can determine that we are dealing with a hyperbola. Furthermore, we need to find out what p is because that's related to the directrix. And if you take a look at the standard equation, we have e p at the top, so I'll set three equal to e p, and I already know that e is equal to three. So to solve for p, I end up with three over three, therefore p is equal to one. And if p is equal to one, the directrix is that x is equal to negative one. We have most of the elements we need to start graphing. In fact, we'll start with our polar plane. We just determined that we're dealing with a hyperbola. This means that we'll have two vertices. Just remember what a hyperbola looks like. It's a curve that opens up in two different directions. So we know we need two vertices. We already have the directrix. It's at negative one. And given that it's x is equal to negative one, it'll be a vertical line going up. So I'll draw a rough line at this first ring. That's our directrix. To find our vertices, and since our major axis is horizontal, we'll have a hyperbola that opens up like this. Therefore, we will have a vertex at angle zero and a vertex at angle theta. Now, of course, this is just a sketch, so don't give it too much value. Let's go ahead and find out what the actual vertices are. So our equation again was r is equal to three over one minus three cosine theta. When theta is equal to zero, Cosine at zero, if you recall what cosine looks like, it's one. So we have three over one minus three times one. We have a radius of three over negative two. So our first point, our first vertex will be at negative three over two and zero. And we can plot that right now at angle of zero. It's shooting this way and it's shooting in the negative direction. So Negative three over two is the same thing as negative 1.5. It's shooting this way. So we'll have a point right here. That's one of our vertices. And to find the next vertex, I'll substitute theta is equal to pi this time. Now remember what cosine looks like. The wave looks like this. And at pi, halfway through, we have negative one. So we have three over one minus three times negative one negative three times negative one is positive three. So we have three over one plus three, that's three over four. Three over four and pi. That's our next point, our next vertex. So our angle is shooting in this direction, pi, and it's three over four. Three over four is three quarters from the distance from here to here. So vertex one and vertex two are shown there. Next, we can obviously sketch it like this. This definitely looks better than our first sketch, but we wanna be more accurate. So we'll create a table of values. 
and my table will consist of points or random points between 0 and pi. And of course, the more points you choose, the more accurate your sketch will be. So my table will look like this. The R values you should get if you substitute these into your equation are, so let's go ahead and plot these, starting with pi over 6. Pi over 6 is in this direction, but it's negative 1.9. So negative 1.9 means that we're going in the opposite direction. We'll have a point right there that takes care of that. Now we have 2 pi over 3. That's in this direction, and that's 1.2. So we'll go in the direction that it is traveling. 1.2 is approximately there. And finally, 5 pi over 6 at 0 0.8. 5 pi over 6, 0 0.8 is just shy of that first circle. So our hyperbola will begin to shape up like this. And you can do your best to make it look symmetrical. And there you have it. That is how to graph the polar equation of a conic.